Guys, welcome to today's video where I want to address one of the fundamental reliability flaws of the Lexus GX470 platform. I talked about this a little bit in my buyer's guide video, so if you haven't already, check that video out. It's almost at 100,000 views, so I really appreciate your viewership. Anyways, in that video, I simply talk about it. In this video, I wanna show you how to do something about it. And of course, the fundamental issue I'm referring to is the active air suspension system in the GX470. The air springs on the rear suspension of the Lexus GX platform are notoriously unreliable, and the front struts with the active dampers are no better. If those fail, along with other components, like that tiny little air compressor. I've seen estimates averaging between the range of $2,500 to $4,000 to get this fixed through a shop. Forget that, I'm going to show you how to DIY the whole thing in possibly the most comprehensive suspension replacement video series on the Lexus GX470 platform. For those of you who are not looking for a lifted suspension setup, but want to maintain or exceed that OEM ride quality, Strutmasters has their glide ride technology that replaces all that early 2000s air suspension, active suspension junk with a static setup. So you don't need to worry about it for the long term. They make all their suspension components right here in the USA, so you can expect great quality. So get ready, this is gonna be a long in-depth video. Let's not waste any time, let's get straight into it. I started out by doing a quick test run. I'm pretty sure the front shocks on this vehicle are no longer functioning as designed. However, I was struck by the quality of the rear suspension. I would expect those air springs to be blown by now. I did purchase this vehicle with 100,000 miles, so I would expect that they would fail by this time but let's take a look and see for ourselves so first of all jack up your gx and put it on jack stands remove your wheels all that good stuff and i have to show you my favorite new garage lighting solution this headlamp from odelphi you could turn it off and on by just waving your hand next to it so it doesn't get all grimy and dirty it's got great battery life that'll last through the entire job the front light bar has two brightness settings and the side light has two brightness settings as well. Be sure to use code LORE470 and use the link in the description for a discount. Let's get started by removing the lower shock bolt with a 17 millimeter socket. Now we need to remove the top shock nut. To do this, you may need to secure the bottom of the shock body with a set of channel locks. I recently installed these so there was no sort of corrosion holding that top nut on. If you run into issues where the shock body keeps spinning but the nut doesn't loosen, you can get a set of channel locks on the bottom of the shock body or you can get a crescent wrench on this top part above the nut and work the nut loose while you hold that in place. For me, however, like I said before, mine came off with no issues. Next, unclip the wiring harness and remove the shock from the upper mount by compressing it. If the shock is still good, you'll see it extend back into position. If it's bad, it'll likely just stay wherever you put it. Now we're looking at the sway bar end links. We're gonna remove both sides. To do this, hold the body of the end link in place with a 14 millimeter wrench and undo that top nut with a 12 millimeter wrench. For this job, I highly recommend a ratcheting 12 mil. It'll save you a lot of time, as you can see from these clips. And to make sure you don't lose it, you can put that nut right back on the top of the end link. It'll be able to drop through the hole no problem. You may notice the end link won't drop through immediately. That's because it's connected to the other side. So let's go to the other side and do all the same things. Now you'll notice that the end link will drop straight through the mount and you won't have any issues with the sway bar binding and preventing you from removing and replacing your suspension. You can leave those sway bar mount bushings on the axle in place, they won't get in your way at all. Now it's time to remove the air spring retainer clip. 
This is not difficult at all. It's just a little bit awkward to reach. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it and try to get the best clips possible to show you where it is. To do that, I'm gonna use my Adelphi headlamp to look around. So here's the upper spring mount from the backside. You can see that metal tab standing up vertically. We need to get a pair of needle nose pliers and pull that outward. You can also see the air line that feeds the air spring right there. We're gonna cut that later so that the air spring drops right out. So here I'm removing that air spring retainer clip with a pair of needle nose pliers, just working it back and forth. This should only take a few seconds, but it might be a little bit hard to reach. And it's really hard to see, so this is probably the best footage I could possibly get for you. It goes in like this and out like that. So that's what you're doing here. Now it's time to do the same exact thing, remove that air spring retainer from the other side. Now let's lower the axle to relieve some of that pressure in the air springs before we cut the air lines. This will also enable us to inspect the condition of the air springs very well. And as you can see, as I suspected, these rear air springs have been replaced. Like I said before, I bought this vehicle with only 100,000 miles. This proves my point that these things are super unreliable and should be replaced with a coil spring setup from Strutmasters as soon as possible. Right here, I'm trying to get my hand up there to remove the end of that air line. And then I find where it leads, which is right here into that little air compressor. And I get tired of trying to remove it, so I just went in and cut it. Then go ahead and cut this airline for the passenger side. Once the airlines have been cut, it's super easy to compress and remove the air springs just like this. I did it with one hand, no problem. Now I just have to cut that top airline, like I said before, and the whole assembly comes right out like this. As you can see from these top shots, it would be pretty difficult to properly remove this airline from all the way up here, but if you're willing to take the extra time, definitely go ahead and do it. Especially if you're replacing the airbag for some reason with a set of new airbags. Then you wanna keep those clips in place. As for me, I'm going for a static setup with Glide Ride from Strutmasters for the added reliability and the improved ride quality, as you'll see near the end of this video. Next step, we're gonna get those coil springs out and check out how they compare to the old components. In my opinion, Lexus was trying to solve a problem that just wasn't there with coil springs. Next up, we're going to install that upper spring locator puck into that upper spring mount. So that's right there. The puck goes straight into the center and it'll keep that coil spring right where it needs to be. Here is what the puck itself looks like and the bolt head is a three quarter inch. So I would use a three quarter inch wrench up top where the space is tight and then get a three quarter inch socket for the bottom and an impact wrench to secure the whole thing. I found that having the normal washer, the locking washer and the nut on the top was too much. The body pinch weld got in the way. So I put the locking washer on the bolt side as you'll see. So here's how it all looks for the way I did it with the normal washer and the nut on top. And then on the bottom side, like I said before, I have the washer, the locking washer, and the bolt. Next up, I wanna take the opportunity to clean the spring seat right here. As you can see, most of the rust on this axle is just surface rust and it comes off with a cloth and some water. So I should spend more time cleaning this thing up. Next up, install that spring isolator and give yourself a little bit more room by jacking up the opposite side of the axle. This trick has helped me so much when installing lifted suspension. And for this, I didn't really need to do it, but it did give me a little extra room. Now just install the spring and it should put itself into place with that spring locating puck on the top and then your axle seat on the bottom. And then go ahead and lower the other side down and check out what it looks like. Now put some thread locking compound, I use medium strength, on your lower shock bolt in preparation for installing your brand new Strutmasters shocks. I usually clean and reinstall the cap on the thread lock just to make sure I don't waste any. 
You also want to use some anti-seize on these lower shock perches. It not only ensures the performance of the shocks, but also makes it so that if you ever have to remove these things, you won't be plagued by rust. Now just remove the shock nut and the upper part of the bushing assembly in preparation for the install. Now install the bottom of the shock on that lower shock perch. And install the lower shock bolt. And of course, just do the same thing to the other side. You may notice that the upper shock doesn't quite line up with that upper shock mount. That's because the axle is drooped pretty low. So go ahead and raise up the axle just a little bit to help line up the upper shock with that upper shock mount. Then when it's close enough to being lined up, get a pair of cable cutters and cut that retention string and let the shock grow itself into that upper shock mount. I would also recommend having those bushings ready up there so that it can press itself into there. And this is what the final assembly should look like. I'm just going to leave it loose for now till I finish the other side as well. I also jacked up the axle a little bit so that the springs could take the full weight of the vehicle just to test it out. It looked like they were doing just fine. Then I installed the other shock nut. And now I'm just looking around making sure that everything looks okay. And to me, everything looks great, so I'm going to keep going and tighten the upper shock nuts all the way down. You don't want to kill these, you don't want to make them too tight. Just tighten them till you feel some resistance from the bushings and then go another couple turns. Next we're going to install the sway bar end links. And just by pushing them down and pushing it back through up into that mount. And again, this is a 12 millimeter on the top and a 14 millimeter on the end link body. Then reinstall and torque your wheels down. And that's it. You no longer have an unreliable air spring set up in the rear, but a nice, reliable, great riding, static coil spring setup from Strutmasters. Everything looks great. The ride height is slightly higher than stock, which is to be expected as the springs need to be allowed to settle in. I mean, already. Just much more sure-footed feeling in the rear. No lights. Boys, let's get an idea for how it drives on the road. All right, our first little speed bump. See how we go. Fronts are same old bouncy things. The rears. Oh, that stopped after just one oscillation. Let's try another one. I think these are bigger over here. Try that one. Can go over this one sideways. Fronts are still oscillating a lot. Yeah, I mean, the suspension was working good uh, before in the back. So, I mean, it's not like a huge change, but it does drive different. Hmm. How would I describe this? It feels more normal in the back now. Like the air suspension has kind of like a, let me just turn this down. The air suspension has kind of a weird feeling when you go over bumps. It's not detrimental to the ride, obviously, because it was okay with Lexus to do that, but it just feels a little weird. This feels much more just normal. Maybe a little more sure-footed. I don't know, that seems to be the only adjective I can come up with at this point. Yeah, all the second order oscillations I'm feeling are definitely coming from the fronts. A lot of bouncing in the front. The rear pretty much just crawled over, so. Much better in my opinion. 
Uh, peace of mind. You don't have to worry about that pesky active suspension system with the airbags. The static setup feels really good so far. I'm excited to do the fronts, however, because those are the only ones that are actually blown. I'm pretty sure they're blown. So we'll take a look and see if we can see any fluid out of the shock or anything like that, and then see how much of an improvement we can get in ride quality. So guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Be sure to tune in for the next one where I replace the front suspension as well. We'll see you in the next one.